Now before we get into making this broccoli sandwich that is so mind-blowingly good that I've had it almost every other day for a month and that will completely change the way you think about making sandwiches at home, we've got to make the garlic confit that's going to act as a major condiment for this sandwich. You're going to want to trust me on this one. Now let's just jump right into it. We've got these small heads of garlic here. These are smaller than usual. It doesn't really matter how much you use. I just want to sort of cover the bottom of a pan or a pot with garlic and then we're just looking to submerge it in olive oil. And I also like having extra on hand, so I'm just gonna make a big batch and get it out of the way. So just get all the papers off of the garlic cloves. I like to cut off the root end and then just separate all the individual cloves. That should be enough. I used, uh, I used nine small heads. If you wanna be particular about it, seven ounces of garlic. And all I wanna do, a little gentle smash to loosen the paper. Smash it just enough to make it easy to remove their paper and then get those cleaned garlic cloves into a bowl. So you can use a really small pot, like a saucepan. I'm just gonna use one of these frying pans, a little 10 inch frying pan, just so you can see everything a little bit easier. So I've got my garlic. I'm gonna get it in one nice even layer. Then I'm gonna cover with olive oil. Now don't worry about using a lot of olive oil because that's gonna be now an infused flavorful oil that you can use to cook with or dress salad with. It's delicious, so. Now I thought I had some fresh thyme or any sort of fresh herbs that I was gonna add to it. So if you do have any, you can add it, but turns out I don't. Now we wanna start this off on high heat just to get that oil up to a temperature. And once you start to see little bubbles starting to emerge, you wanna drop that heat down to the lowest setting and we wanna cook this very, very slow. It's about 144 now and we're just getting started. And I can notice that on this burner, the bubbles are a little too vigorous, even at its lowest temperature. So I'm gonna move it over to the left burner, which has an extra, extra low setting. And I'm just gonna cook it on that extra low setting for around 45 minutes to an hour. Now, if you don't have an extra low setting, you can just regulate the temperature yourself. If you see a little bit too vigorous of a bubble action going, you can just turn the heat completely off, wait for the bubbles to simmer down a tad, and then just pop the heat back on to low. You can also roast them in a 250 degree oven and not fuss with it too much. I tend to like to do it on the stove top. It's around 2.30, it's about 50 minutes into the cooking process, and it's time to check the garlic. What we want is to, to not really have developed any dark color. We want each clove to be fully softened, sweet. It may have turned like one shade of white darker and they should be easy to smash. Once our garlic cloves are basically cooked, we can just shut the heat off and let the oil come down to a cool enough temperature to strain it out. And it'll also continue to carry over cook the garlic. Once the garlic is cool, we can strain that into a bowl through a mess strainer, separate the garlic cloves. And as you can see, these are nicely confit. They're easy to crush and they're gonna make a nice puree. Wipe the pan out real quick. We're gonna knead it again in a little bit. We can take those garlic cloves. We can add them into like a little quart container. You can also do this in a food processor or a blender. And we're gonna add two tablespoons of this crushed Calabrian chili. It's gonna add nice color and a little bit of heat and flavor. And then maybe like one or two tablespoons of the olive oil that the garlic cooked in just to help the puree along. I'm gonna take an immersion blender and I'm just going to puree this into the quart container using the blender to sort of push in and smash the puree while blending blending it to create a very smooth puree that looks and behaves almost very similar to like a mayo. Once it's nicely emulsified and thick, check for seasoning and you can add a little bit of salt and then we can set that aside. And now the other spread is gonna be some ricotta. We're gonna add a little bit of salt, a little bit of olive oil. I forgot about, I forgot about using the garlic oil behind me, so I'm gonna add more of that right now. And then with a whisk, just gonna sort of whip it a little bit and break up those curds so it's a lot smoother and spreadable. You could also whip this in a blender. This is just a little easier way to do that and then it should be a nice creamy spreadable thing it's gonna go great in a sandwich now the idea behind this sandwich is that we're bringing the vegetable into the spotlight, making it the main event of this sandwich. And we're gonna use some nice Italian meats as the supporting role, the sidekick. We're flipping it on its head. Usually we stuff a sandwich with meat and maybe there's a vegetable inside. Maybe there's not, maybe a little lettuce, a little arugula, but it's not the star, not today. 
First, what you're gonna need is some very thin sliced soppressata or some salami, very thin. The thinner, the better, because that's gonna be a more tender piece of meat. And so when we go into bite through the sandwich, it's going to be nice and tender and not pull out. The thickness of sliced deli meats in a sandwich, always as thin as possible. Same goes with some nice prosciutto, as thin as you can. The thinner, the more tender it's going to be. So we got about two ounces of both of those. We're just gonna kind of just thinly drape them on the bottom and it's gonna be just a subtle addition of meat. Set that off to the side. We have a ciabatta roll. A ciabatta roll is my favorite. Whole Foods makes a great one by me. If you got a good bakery by you and they got some ciabatta rolls or maybe there's another roll you like, use it. But this is the one that's good for me. We're gonna set this off to the side and then that leaves us with the main ingredient which is broccolini. And I know the sizes of these broccolini bunches vary but for me I find for one sandwich one head of broccolini is going to work out just fine. So I just want to cut off the woody ends and then I want to go bite sized pieces. So I'm going to go maybe one inch cuts. These stems are very skinny. If your stems are pretty thick, you might want to split them in half so that they cook evenly. Go up to the heads. That'll cook down a little bit and be the perfect amount for a sandwich. For one bunch of broccolini, we need about one quarter cheek of a lemon. And I've got some thinly sliced garlic and a little bit of red chili flake. Now everything's ready to get started. We can now cook the broccolini. Now today you're gonna see me use these non-stick pans that were provided to me by our sponsor today, Maiden. Today I'm using Maiden's just released non-stick set made of their award-winning non-stick pots and pans made in America, including a stock pot, saute pan, a saucepan, and this 10-inch frying pan. It lasts 10 times longer than premium competitors' nonstick surfaces and 70 times longer than ceramic nonstick surfaces. Passed 100% by a third party's health, safety, and non-toxic tests in both the US and in Europe so that you know the pans you are using are safe and healthy to cook with. Bad nonstick pans can't handle high heat, but Maiden's nonstick pans are oven safe up to 500 degrees. And these are not thin, cheap pans. They're made with five ply stainless steel. So if you want to sear a vegetable or something in there, you're going to have the power to do so. And like made in stainless steel pans, the nonstick pans are covered by a limited lifetime warranty. I love using made in pans. I love the offset handle. They're not too heavy. They just sort of feel right in the hand. So if you need to get stacked up on pans, Maiden's Gotcha, they're offering you $100 off this nonstick set, or you can save 15% off on individual products with the link down in the description. So go check out that link, get your discount, check out Maiden, now let's get into this recipe. So we wanna get the pan we used earlier on high heat. And one thing that differs about nonstick pans from stainless steel pans is they need to be heated up with oil in them. So make sure you got some of that garlic oil in the pan and then we're gonna add the broccolini. And we're gonna to toss that in the oil for a bit and after a minute or so, once they've kind of touched the heat, we can hit them with some salt and then we're just gonna let them sit there on high heat and let them sear like a piece of steak. Give it a good two minutes to sear on that side before you start to flip them around. And we're looking for that kind of roasty brown color, the sugar coming out of the broccolini and caramelizing in the pan. Once we've got some caramelization happening and we can see that the broccolini is mostly cooked through, we're gonna add the chili flake and the garlic. We're just gonna toast those a little bit into the oil and transfer that flavor. Once there's a little bit of color developing on the edges of the garlic, then we're gonna kill the heat and we're gonna squeeze in that cheek of lemon juice. Stir it around, that's gonna steam the broccoli through a little bit and finish cooking. And then we can get that into a plate. And then we can toast up our ciabatta roll whole so that we have a nice little crunch on the outside, but the inside still stays nice and soft. We can slice it in half. The ciabatta should be nice and spongy. And then on that bottom half of the bread, we're gonna go with a nice generous smear of the ricotta, and then a very thin layer of the thin prosciutto, followed by a very thin layer of the soppressata. There's gonna be an urge to go heavy with the meat there, but have restraint. Then on top of there goes a nice mound of the broccolini. Then some grated pecorino on top, and then finally a generous smear of that spicy garlic confit puree on the top half of the bread. Close up the sandwich, cut it in half, and you better believe that you've got one hell of a sandwich that you're about to enjoy. The broccoli is cooked through, but still has crunch. So there's texture. It's not just soft broccoli. And it has a little bit of that caramelization, so it's got like a sweet roasty flavor. You get that garlic puree, a little bit of the spice from the Calabrian chilies. The meats are there, but they're just subtle. They're just adding flavor to the broccolini, and the ricotta acts as like a nice sauce. And the construction and the integrity of the sandwich is still holding up. That's how you know it's a good sandwich. 
out of control delicious you must try it the recipe is going to be down in the description along with the link to made in pans go grab your made in that's all that i have today i'll see you next time until then take care of yourself and go feed yourself for more delicious recipes got a few more on the screen right now like this beef stroganoff that you've really got to try and thank you for watching